Hey guys, this is Gorax. Today I would like to show you how to improve your guild boss damage, what units I use and the free to play alternatives. As you know, some of the guild bosses can be a challenge while some are just a walk in the park. This guide is supposed to show you how to try to maximize your damage. Don't be afraid to experiment with units you already have as everything works differently for everyone. I will also show only a range formation as I am no run and melee formation currently. Once I get that sorted, I will create a melee variant guide as well. In this guide, we will cover a formation, units, units alternatives, emblems, heroes and tricky bosses such as Pitfiend and Zombie. Let's begin. Formation I am currently running is like my Dragon Invasion formation, focusing on Marksman and Wood Elf. All other units are here to support them. Marksman is our main damage dealer, outclassing every other unit. Unit placement is very important to utilize spell range on both Marksman and Wood Elves. With his weapon release, he became a PvE monster. My weapon is level 100 and 4 star awaken as there is no need to progress it any further. Wood Elves, our secondary damage dealer, used to be the best unit until Marksman weapon has been released. Still very good damage, unit placement is important, utilize double strike. Ice Elemental, unit that can slow down enemy units, increasing both Marksman and Wood, wood Elf damage by proccing double strike skill as well as reducing enemy damage reduction through the awakenings. Regnant Seal, emaciates enemy units decreasing the unit damage reduction as well as defense by 20%. Deep Fear, also increases all friendly units on head path unit penetration. Furthermore, Head Domain increases penetration by 200 and critical hit damage by 30%. Reviathan Akafishi, probably the best PvE support unit in the game. Weapon release only make him so much more useful as it added two extra sources of enemy damage reduction debuff and a buff to all allied units when a water type spell is cast. Sadly, I don't have his weapon unlocked yet and he is only 1 star awakened but he has increased my damage the most of all other units. Bone Dragon. Before the release of Ravi, he was the bone of every PvE formation. His skill fear decreases units damage reduction by 20% and is an N area of effect skill. Crushing Roll after awakening decreases def by 30%. On top of that, Aging is aura effect skill that reduces all hostile units damage reduction. And as you can see, my bone dragon is still not 6 star, so there is a way for improvement. Nightmare, a tank unit that provides enemy damage reduction debuffs. Horsey ultimate skill after awakening reduce unit damage reduction by 30%. Another skill, Dreamcatcher, reduces enemy damage reduction by 2% up to 15 stacks, which is 30%. After awakening, this skill can stack up to 20 times. Haladin, second tank. You might ask why. Well, after awakening him to 5 stars, he provides tremendous damage increase thanks to his buffs. I will not use him before that point. When he summons Sanctuary Retinus, he increases damage of all friendly units by 10%. His skill, Incentive, increases friendly units within a large ha range high morale and 500 crit hit for 26 seconds. After awakening this skill is even better, adding extra 50% unit damage, 150 tenacity and works on all friendly units. Talk about alternative units. So let's say you don't have the units that I showed in this video. You can use other units as there's plenty of them available right now and there'll be more in the future once more weapons get released. The unit I will not replace is Marksman as he is the core of this formation, it's all about him and Wood Elves, I will not replace them at the moment, I know some people run similar formation without them, Wood Elves will become a great supper unit after their weapon is released. Ice Elemental can be replaced with Ice Demon if you have him at 6 star, I don't have him at 6 star so I'm not using him. Regnant Seer will be a unit that will be very hard to obtain for most of the people. A good replacement is 5 star Awakened Monk with 2 star weapon or a 5 star Awakened Pegasus with 6 star weapon, preferably at level 100 as well. When it comes to the Revy and Bone Dragon, I will not replace them as they are very good damage increase. However, if you don't have them and have all other core units, you can use Monks, 
Pegasus, Six Star Ice Demon, Death Knight with Two Star Specialization of Lore Heart, Hell Hunt with Awaken Weapon as high as possible, Cavaliers with Awaken Weapon as high as possible, Naga with Maxed Out Weapon, or Manticore with as high weapon level as possible. Nightmare and Paladin can be replaced with all of the above, however I will run at least one tank in formation. Tanks that reduce enemy damage reduction are Centaur with Awaken Weapon, Dendroid, as well as Regnan Serpent. What emblems should units wear? Before we jump into emblem selection, let's talk about a few things you should be doing. First, don't be afraid to remove emblems for your from your main team and put them on your PvE team. I was too lazy to do it, but now with all the quality of life changes, it is easier than before and only takes a couple seconds. I take off my Titan plus 5 oh, emblems and my Nagas plus 3 emblems and put them on my Marksman. This is the only emblem move I require as all of my other PvE units are there to support and the emblems are good enough to do so. Second, invest into at least one Darkness Enlightenment. This emblem has become my favorite and can fit a lot of units. It is probably second best emblem to Path of Assassin. Okay, let's roll with the units. Marksman. Marksman should use your highest casted Path of Assassin emblem followed by highest casted Order or Goodness emblem with plus Holy Emblem attack bonus. I am using plus 5 Will of Knowledge and plus 3 Path of Assassin. This really makes a difference. If you don't have Path of Assassin, use Axoa token. Wood Elves. Use your second highest casted Path of Assassin full set. If you don't have Path of Assassin, use Axoa token. My Wood Elves use plus 0 Path of Assassin. Ice Elemental uses Darkness Enlightenment, as this is a support unit, you don't need to cast these emblems to become useful. Regnal Seer, for the purpose of PvE, I will use Everlasting Secret to increase the skill levels, however, since I don't have too many of them, I use Path of Assassin. Revy and Bone Dragon use Everlasting Secret to boost effects on their skills. Nightmare and Paladin, you can use Darkness Enlightenment, Everlasting Secret, or just play Defensive Emblem. Heroes, there is really only one hero you should be using, and his name is Gelo, God of PvE. He is a beast in the PvE due to his ultimate Frenzy, which sacrifices friendly units HP by 30%, but boosts their attack speed by over 500%, paired with Precision, which grants friendly units 100% critical hit and accuracy, and a spell mark of highest level, Slayer, Rush, ta rush Tactics, Fast Attacks or Merv will work wonders. I use Slayer as this is my highest level mark spell. There are a few tricky bosses, Pit Fiend and Zombie. On these bosses you need extra survival as they can kill your melee units or your marksmen and woodels before they start hitting. This is where I bring my 6 star Judicator and replace one of the units in the formation. Even 3 star Judy will be enough. If you still can't survive, it is time to sacrifice some damage as it is important to deal damage for the whole duration of the fight. Try swapping Pegasus to add extra shield or add Monk for extra healing. There are also a few more tips. Okay, Your guild has to make sure you research final damage which will increase your total damage as well and also if you can do more than 60% of boss HP in a single hit, hit it once and move to the other boss, that way your guild will progress further and you are not doing an overkill damage. Well, we arrived at the end of the video. If you guys have any feedback, please do share in the comment section below. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching, stay safe, bye!